Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Learn Engineering with me by watching me repeatedly fail at building things. In this video, we're making a robotic hand. Now, you might see this project and think it's extremely difficult and I must be some sort of giga genius for building it. If you don't think that, uh, please do. The way it works is actually quite simple. It starts with some fishing line and elastic string. So this is our prototype finger, you see. It's three jointed segments which bend like this. And the fishing line is pulled to bend the finger while the elastic one provides a restoring force that straightens it. I said a restoring force which straightens it. It has erectile dysfunction. Okay, this is why we have prototypes. If a single string is not enough, I'll just have to double the string instead. Ooh, yeah. Now, we motorize the control of the finger using these three components. A potentiometer angle sensor, a gear motor, and a motor driver. You probably don't know what these things do because you have a life, but don't worry, I don't. So, in order to explain what they do, I need to get a soldering kit to solder them. Now, when looking for a soldering kit, there are a number of factors you should consider to make the right selection, such as temperature range, interchangeable soldering tips, power draw, and most importantly, whether it's the cheapest one on eBay. Oh no! Now, soldering requires a substance called flux to remove the oxidation from whatever you're soldering so that the solder can make good contact with it. Usually, flux is included in the hollow center of the solder, but it turns out the cheap included solder that comes with the kit doesn't have the flux. And to buy one that does, it only costs like twice the amount as the whole kit. <sighs> hate capitalism. Anyways, here's the soldering. Now that that's done, we can see that the motor spins the motor driver controls the direction which it spins and the potentiometer helps read what angle it's at. My IQ is approximately 3000, so I combine the functionality of all these parts to be able to control the angle of the motor shaft, basically recreating a servo. Okay, so why don't I just use a servo? Well, look at this, the servo's way too big. The smaller parts are able to fit into the palm of the hand instead of having to go in the forearm so the final product can be a lot more compact. Credit where credit is due, this great design idea came from Madi Designs, who's also making a bionic hand, link in description. So I made this little pulley wheel thing to help pull the fishing line, but one issue I ran into was that the D shaft of the motor was not actually big enough to fit into the angle sensor, so it wouldn't rotate with it. Damn. But surprisingly, this was pretty easily fixed with some tape. Now I just had to thread the line through and tie a knot to secure it, and then the parts fit into this little box. Upon testing, the contraption was once again in the state of kinda works, kinda doesn't, but don't worry, we'll fix it later. In other words, it's perfect. My friends, here is where everything goes south. You might notice that my hair is a bit longer, and that's because it's literally been weeks since I filmed the last bit. So what happened? Well first, I made more fingers plus a palm component to fit all the motors in. Which, by the way, do you know how hard that is for someone like me who dropped out of school to do crypto? It's not like I'm any good at 3D design, so I needed like 69 YouTube tutorials and two packs of Red Bull in the process. When I first started designing it, this baby looked like this. But when I finished, it looked like this. This is Luang Fo Yai. A Buddhist monk. Anyways, that's not even the main problem. Problem number one, the guys at Alps were probably smoking weed when they designed this potentiometer. Because who the f puts a cutout on the side that's supposed to be flat? That was causing problems even with the tape. So I had to try all sorts of goofy ways to fill it up and in the process, accidentally jammed four of them with the epoxy resin. Rest in peace. Problem number two, I tried putting the motor drivers on the hand itself to save space and to look cool for the thumbnail, but that just overcomplicated it because I had to do so much soldering in such a small space and I think I accidentally broke one of the motor drivers because it just stopped working. I don't know, maybe I overheated it with the soldering iron or something, but let's be honest, when the wires look like expired spaghetti bolognese and the soldering looks like prehistoric metal nuggets from the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, you know it's about to fall apart at any moment. Okay, so let's break this down logically. 
I tried putting the motor drivers on the hand and that was too much in too small of a space, which resulted in the whole thing failing. So I used my problem solving skills, really connected the dots for this one and had a good think about it. And I thought, I'll put the Arduino in there too, it'll look even cooler. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Yeah, so now I blew up one motor driver from a short circuit, got a bunch of wires stuck on these components, which I can't be bothered to remove, and overall wasted enough wires to rebuild a sci-fi version of the Roman Empire. I decided to restart. I ordered some new parts from AliExpress, but they were gonna take a few weeks to arrive. So in the meantime, it was an opportunity to take a break from all this difficult engineering, recover from burnout and regrow some brain cells. In need of a bit of emotional support, I turned to the ChatGPT AI, cause well, let's be honest, it's not like I have any friends in real life. <laughs> let's start off with the main question at hand. Why am I so ass at building robots? It's not uncommon for people to feel like they are not skilled at building robots, especially if they are just starting out. Building robots can be a challenge- Oh damn, it's actually giving some good advice. Well, now how about, uh, how can I get better at making robots? There are several steps you can take to improve your skills and become better. Oh wow, I was just gonna use this as a skit for the video, but it seems like it actually has some good answers. I should probably ask some like, actually important questions. It might be able to help me. It's natural to want to repair a relationship when it has been damaged, you can try to try to repair the relationship and potentially rekindle your love. Open communication on what went key to any healthy relationship responsibility for your action rebuilding and trust in the showing that you are willing to make a to rekindle the love you once had. <laughs> it's natural to experience feelings of sadness reminders of the person to move on after the end of a relationship feelings and move such forward. as spending time with the emotions. emotions. <laughs> Alright, now watch this. As an artificial intelligence, I do not attend physical events. Is there something specific you would like to know oh about Sakon or oh, any other event? Okay, a couple weeks later, the parts arrived. Better parts this time, mind you. So, with renewed motivation, replenished inspiration, and a burning passion for YouTube ad revenue, uh, I mean for the engineering process, it was back to the grind again. Well, the montage. Finally, with great effort and sacrifice, we arrive at the finished hand. For my unmatched perspicacity coupled with my sheer indefatigability makes me a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. Although I guess there's a reason people design custom PCBs, huh? We're back to the breadboard and it looks ugly as hell. Anyways, to test out the finished project, I place upon its palm the source of all that suffering through this whole engineering process. The f***ing $14 soldering iron I got from eBay. Cause oh lord was there a lot of soldering. I'm convinced that soldering is the root of like 80% of human suffering. The thumb doesn't even close onto the other fingers properly. God damn. Okay now after that I need to film the intro sequence. Let me give a bit more of a technical explanation now. I managed to write a python program that directly controls the Arduino from this computer right here. Usually, the code has to be run on the Arduino, but I found a library called PyFormata, which means you don't have to run the code on the Arduino, you can just run it in Python. What that means is I can press these keys, and that'll control the motors. If I press all of them at the same time, these numbers on the screen are the angle readings from the potentiometers, which play the important role of limiting the angle of the motor so that it doesn't jam its fingers into itself and self-destruct. Alright, so for the intro, we just pan up from under the table, and then lock it on a tripod. And then now. Yes, I've done it. Probably not gonna test out anything else because I feel like this thing's gonna break at any second now. 